The feeling of the markets being down today probably disappointed you, but that's nothing compared to the feeling of our beloved QILD possibly lying to us. We all, based on our research, were led to believe that QILD's ridiculous 12% dividend yield would be taxed as a return of capital. But many were shocked to learn upon receiving their 1099 tax forms that this was actually taxed as ordinary income all along. Now I'll give my thoughts on what I think is going on here. Just make sure that you've hit that like button for the algorithm and just make sure that you're subscribed because I make videos on high yielding dividend income ETFs all the time. So the reason we all believed Q Yield was giving out rocks or return on capital was because of the tax forms Global X provides on their own website. Every single month they give out a form 19A and super specific breakdowns down to the 100 percentage of how much is actually investment income and how much is actually rock. Now according to my good friend and fellow finance YouTuber Matt Munez, he actually called Global X who informed him that all of these tax forms being displayed every single month are actually just estimates and that they should never be taken as tax advice or a way to plan for taxes. This is actually found on the bottom of that tax form page, along with other useful information we probably don't want to hear, such as Q Yield has estimated that it distributes more than its income and net realized gains, ouch, or that its rocks shouldn't be confused with an actual yield or an income payment. So a lot of people on the Q Yield gang subreddit have reported looking at their tax forms for their brokerage and seeing all their distributions being ordinary dividends. I can tell you from looking at my preliminary fidelity statements, it appears that all of my Q Yield distributions were ordinary except for the large December distribution, which we all know is a short-term capital gains distribution. Now it is possible that this is all still preliminary and that brokerages will continue to update their tax forms. This is actually pretty normal. It's happened to me in the past couple years when I use Robinhood and these updates will happen. And this is why I typically don't file my taxes till after mid-March just to make sure I have everything settled. Check out this conversation on Reddit. Somebody from the QILD gang actually asked Fidelity a question about return on capital, specifically about Global X. And we actually have a Fidelity verified moderator giving a response. So I thought this was interesting. You can either search this yourself or pause the video right here. When we look at Global X's 2020 year end tax supplement, we can see that almost all of their distributions were actually return on capital. But according to people on the subreddit who have claimed to call Global X, they have said due to volatility in 2021, lots of options were being sold and they had to go in and buy them. That's why all their distributions in 2021 are apparently ordinary and not rock. Some good news is that my new C dividends seem to show up as a mix of non-dividend distributions or rock and qualified distributions. JEPI shows a mix of ordinary and qualified dividends. And that makes sense because JEPI buys and holds stocks similar to a long-term dividend investor. So you might be wondering, why do I keep mentioning rock? Why do I keep mentioning qualified and ordinary dividends? What's the big deal? Well, the difference is how they are taxed by the government. Rock is usually not a taxable event and just reduces an investor's adjusted cost basis until it has reached zero. Then it would be a capital gain. Or rock potentially just delays paying taxes until an asset is actually sold. Qualified dividends, on the other hand, are those that get preferential tax treatment. This can occur when I buy shares of 3M and I just continue to keep holding them for the long term. And then they just send me dividend checks every single quarter. This is really the optimal way of investing. Now, ordinary dividends, they are not tax efficient. They are taxed as ordinary income. That's gonna be at your highest tax bracket. This is typically seen with REITs or doing options trading, which a lot of these income ETFs do. So people that tend to own income ETFs like Q Yield, they tend to own a lot of shares. So you can quickly see why investors might be mad. That's a lot of money that they are now gonna to have to give up to the government so that the government can buy crack pipes and weapons of mass destruction with our money. Now I definitely feel people's anger with Global X. They seem to be quite misleading with their tax forms every month. What good is giving out these forms if they're not gonna be accurate at all? And to justify them not being accurate, they're just claiming that they're estimates. Seems like false advertising to me. As dividend investors who hope to one day reach fire, you know how important it is to have predictable cash flows and not have huge variances in spending. People really rely on these income ETFs for retirement, 
so paying extra in taxes is going to take away from another possible necessity. Now I can't be the only one who's mad at Global X and Q Yield. Let me know in the comments how you feel or if this is just an overreaction on my part. I'm still holding on to my shares because I think making money and paying taxes on it is better than not having something that pays you for simply just owning it. This really does just show the importance of diversification and not having all your eggs in one basket because you never really know what's going on with these funds and what they're doing behind the scenes. Now these videos, they do take a lot of time for me to put together. Please consider just hitting that like button for a small time YouTuber. As always, my videos are found in podcast form under the Collect Cash podcast name. I'm still on Spotify these days and I will buy stash and collect cash you later. Nothing in this video should be counted as financial or tax advice.